This game is T and is not suitable for kids. Ah, spoiler alert! Hey there, honey! And guess. Welcome back to Miles Edgeworth Ace Attorney Investigations, everybody! It's not been very long for you guys, but it's been it's no it's two been two weeks, three weeks. Something like that for us. Yeah. Anyhow, we'll we're we're goes. starting a brand new case today. We've done the turnabout visitor, <laughs> turnabout airlines, and the kidnap turnabout. <laughs> now we're going to episode four. Oh right, reminiscence. Turnabout reminiscence. This is the flashback case. I forgot about this. Oh so. yeah, brief. I guess I'll do a brief recap. So sure, thank you. Case one, uh, basketball, basketball boy, boy broke. Boy. broke <laughs> <laughs> he broke into Edgeworth's he, office, he, tried to steal something, but there was nothing there. He, he shot kept, a guy. There was a second he, random guy who went and actually stole some files he and kept, left. Um, frequently opening his uh, jacket nonstop. Then there yeah. was like a the, the narcoleptic airline lady who was in a smuggling ring and was trying yeah. to smuggle stuff. Then there was then there was um, guy who kidnapped himself. No. <laughs> No, no. <laughs> the Butt of That's the Year what... <laughs> Award winner, Am Ernest Amato. Yeah, okay, okay. Yeah. So I'm, I'm getting it. I'm so getting we're, Edgeworth basically goes, I remember when I met Kay a long time ago. ago. And that's this long, case. Long All right, tab. let's it's just, go. It's just American Pie. The entire song. <laughs> Three, two, one, go. <laughs> okay. Kay Faraday. The young lady who calls herself the second Yadagarasu. The piece of cloth that she conjured up has taken me back to many years ago. This is gonna be like when they're kids or something? This will be fun. Seven years earlier. So, nope. Edgeworth's a 15 year old. I think he's 18. What is this music? It's the original court music. Who are these weirdos? Is that Von Karma? Yeah, that's right. I did it. I killed the guy. Whoa, look at them muscles. But it was the great thief Yadagarasu that told me to do it! I asked the defendant, just exactly what are you trying to say? Don't you get it? I know the true identity of the Yadagarasu! Who is this chick? The defense lawyer? The Yadagarasu is the man standing over there at the prosecutor's bench! Are you saying that I'm the Yadagarasu? Don't you dare deny it! You told me to kill him when you snuck into the embassy! Is he wearing no shoes? Are you claiming that Mr. Faraday is the Yadagarasu? That's exactly what I'm saying. Mr. Rell, I think we've heard just about enough of you. Your Honor, please listen to me. I'm telling the truth. You've got to believe me. Is it the same judge as always? Possibly. <laughs> yeah, that looks like the same old bearded dude. Humph. <laughs> In accordance with the defendant's accusation, a new prosecutor shall be called to replace Mr. Faraday. What? This court will be in recess until the new prosecutor is ready. <laughs> it's Edgeworth. That'd be so funny. Uh, we need a new prosecutor. Edgeworth, you on the case, bro? Aw, yeah! <laughs> September 10th, 3.20 p.m., District Court, 3rd Floor Lobby. <laughs> We're Edgeworth back from, like, uh, Turnabout Beginnings. Uh, Edgeworth, He's wearing the super special coat. Oh my gosh, how young does he look? <laughs> He looks like a Fire Emblem character. <laughs> I'm waiting for him to take out his rapier and, like, destroy us in, like, two critical hits. <laughs> it's almost time for me to enter the courtroom. And so it is that my first assignment as a prosecutor will be as a replacement for a prosecutor who has been accused by the defendant. Which I think is ridiculous. We've done that before. Edgeworth? Uh, Von Karma? Von Karma, everybody! Sir... Hey, Bowser, what's up? Have you read over all the documents regarding this <laughs> trial? <laughs> but I'm you so, didn't expect him to I'm be back. I'm so happy, and I shouldn't be. <laughs> I'm so happy to see him again. Look at the shading! Yeah. <laughs> look at the collar- like, look at the, um- He's a vampire. Yeah, look, oh my gosh, he's got, like, Angelina Jolie cheekbones. <laughs> <laughs> you heard it here first, folks. <laughs> Yes, sir. I've memorized everything there is to know. Very good. The paperwork for the prosecutor's substitution is just about complete. Edgeworth, always bear in mind that as your mentor, I met for Von Karma. We'll accept nothing short of perfection. I understand, sir. To have the chance to stand in court at such an early stage in my yeah, career. You're 18. You're the same age as me, bro. Yeah. What in the world? I am honored and proud. 
As I have watched over your studies, I am giving you this very rare chance. Yeah. Prove yourself. Crush the defendant's pathetic lies into oblivion. Wow! <laughs> Look at that smile. Mr. He is Bonkarno. 60. That's it? Oh, wow. <laughs> My mentor has never known defeat in 35 years. A legendary prosecutor. So wait, he started prosecuting at 30? No. 60 minus 35. 25. <laughs> I can't do math! That's why I'm not in college right now. Yes, sir. Oh my gosh. That's such a legendary prosecutor is watching over and judging my performance. I have to be perfect in every way. Like Mary Poppins. How no, can you ever be Mary Poppins? She's practically perfect in every oh. way. Oh, he doesn't follow also, us around. Why in the world, like... <sighs> Edgeworth's outfit, literally, like, he reminds me of Crom or, like, Elwood, or somebody, like, seriously. Let's talk about you. A bookshelf, huh? Compendium of laws for beginners. I don't have the time to read this and second-guess myself now. Also, I gotta think about what voice I'm gonna do for that, um, Yeah. <laughs> defense attorney. Because she looks totally normal, which is super fun. <laughs> yeah, you're gonna have fun voicing her. Okay. Uh, the trial will resume shortly. Uh, please wait a moment, sir. <laughs> I was already well aware of that. Shortly or in a moment, which one is it? Be specific. Egad, what a cold stare he's giving me. However, as a disciple of Von Karma, there is no option but to win. Wow, Edgeworth's like a different person. <sighs> he's good. The power of his cold stare rivals my own. He's sleeping while standing up. <laughs> That's amazing. Is Gumshoe existent in this world? Uh, well, considering it's his, his silhouette on the yeah, chapter probably. title, probably. Hmm, a luxurious and beautiful leather sofa. He's like 20. It's the most comfortable sofa pillow, but I keep it exclusively, exclusively for visitors. <laughs> wow. I must say, every part of this courthouse is meticulously well kept. Yeah, it's like gold. Although the positioning of this sofa puts one under the direct gaze of the judges. Every judge in this courthouse's history has had quite the beard. What? And has gallantly parted with their beloved head of hair, I see. What in the world? There's no female judges in this game. <laughs> At least their portraits aren't hung up. Sexist. I don't even know. Being a judge must be a very stressful career. Or it's more like the, how could she be a pirate? She doesn't even have a beard! Yeah. Yeah. Is it like that, maybe? <laughs> aren't these great? Daddy made all of these! Awesome! But didn't you get fired right after you made them? Ah, uh, yeah, I did. I spent the same amount of money on this model as it cost to build the real thing. <laughs> and my boss wasn't very happy with me. <laughs> hey, Daddy, didn't you say you built a secret mechanism inside of it? <laughs> I'll tell you about it someday when you're older. A secret mechanism? Maybe he installed it as payback for getting fired? It could be trouble. Now I'm curious. Right. A model of the courthouse. It's pretty well constructed. Hmm? Hands and a face? Don't tell me this thing transforms! <laughs> Yet I wonder what for other purpose the code they, they have been made. Oh, I thought it was gonna be like, here's a model of the courthouse, and like when like an igniter goes off, it like sets fire <laughs> to like the judge. Oh, wow. Or something weird. <sighs> Excuse me, madam, but is something the matter? Is it me? Sure. Where, where's the- She's behind, Edgeworth. Oh, I can't see her! What Sorry. is Sorry. It's not old Becca. I just thought someone who had brought hors d'oeuvres by now. B but this is a courthouse! It would be quite atypical to provide hors d'oeuvres here. Are you sure? Someone poured me a fresh cup of coffee last time I was here. What the heck does she think a courthouse is for? I bet that was Diego Armando who did that. Oh, oh yeah, by the way, this take case takes place before the Terry Falls case. Okay, so before because, that Because that, that was Edgeworth's first real trial. Yeah, but the this first is his real substitution. Trial. Yeah, like a substitute teacher. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, gosh, that's what the old lady looks like looks a like. teacher's sick. This is so good. I could drink a whole gallon. What? I've never heard of water that tastes that good. Really? Maybe I'll give him a minute. <laughs> <laughs> this is like a Wolfgang cock. <laughs> Basically, does he plan on gulping an entire reservoir dry? The water's so good. Bulletin board. There are trial schedules posted on it. Trials scheduled for this week, huh? There's only one to tr uh, there's only today's trial listed. This must be a mistake, or this country's judicial system is not working as it should. Well, I don't know. This should lead to the defendant lobbies. Edgeworth, where is your composure? If you wish to take a look at your enemy, do so in the courtroom. 
as you crush him. Wow! Indeed, thank you. You are a man of wisdom and experience, sir. This is amazing. Imagine dramatic like, irony and, at its and finest. And Von Karma kind of is like his father figure, too. Right? Yeah. Imagine living in a house with Von Karma. Oh, that would be terrible. Edgeworth, if you were going to crush your opponent, you might as well pour me this glass of milk. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Mr. Prosecutor, sir! You've got a good eye if you can tell that I'm a prosecutor with just one glance. As there are always only prosecutors and defense attorneys in with this lobby. I usually hit the mark if I guess one or the other while there's a recess. You are only guessing! Oh, my Anyhow. gosh. Today's trial should have ended in just one minute! <laughs> <laughs> because the defendant was picked up by the security camera, correct? Exactly. The killer had the gall to say that he only killed because he was instructed to do so. Even more outrageous is his claim that the case prosecutor Burn Faraday gave the order. Here's the thing that I'm trying to understand. Where does K play into this? Is this gonna be like Trucy, where K like helps the defendant escape? Or like forge evidence that she's like, whoops! <laughs> also, t take a look at that weird smile he has. He's <laughs> uh, he, um, what does he remind me of? Yeah, he's got really big lips, which is weird. Um, mm, mm, what am I thinking of? I don't know. He looks familiar, which is annoying. Ha! Fart ain't such a fool! He's been cornered by his very own prey. Sir, are you an acquaintance of Mr. Burn Faraday? Hiff! <laughs> He's a pathetic man who speaks nothing but nonsense. Mm -hmm. Nonsense? He once tried to explain to me a way of punishing those who cannot be brought to court. Those who cannot be brought to court? That is nonsense, for no man is above the law. Well, there are always a few exceptions. Like me. However, there's no reason to even deal with such individuals. A prosecutor is a guardian of the court, one with no obligation of two outside realized, matters. Um, Edgeworth's cravat is bigger is, is bigger than um his Von face. And yeah, and, and Von Karma's. Thus, there is no reason to deal with such individuals. I see. Edgeworth, disgracing yourself as far as he has will not be forgiven. Have no fear. I will not let you down, sir. In place of the accused prosecutor Burn Faraday, I'll prove the defendant's guilt. Ooh. Very good. I've secured an hour of recess for you to prepare to do just an that. An hour? Oh my god. Meanwhile, gosh. I'll be going to the spa. He, like, pulled some strings to do that. Bribed the judge with some taco A triple well. caviar. <laughs> oh, yeah. Caviar? No, no. No, remember Rise from the Ashes? He got the, ca like, free caviar lunches. Oh, right. There's that. Well, but talk for an he, hour recess, you're gonna need more goes, than taco He always about. goes and... Has Taco Bell with, with um, Christoph uh, Gavin. Gavin, yeah. <laughs> Christoph Gavin, I have burritos in my chambers. I'll meet you there. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> Show them all the power of the Von Karma. How do you think today's trial? So, have you achieved a firm understanding of the case? Yes, sir. I have memorized everything that is written down in the case files. Good for you. Well, then explain the case to me. I want to see if you really know what you were talking about. Understood. Oh, here we go. A murder was committed on September 8th in front of the Cahadopian Embassy. What the heck is that? The victim, Mr. Dead Man. Wow! Yeah! Look at that! Wait, look at that mustache. That's so good. The, the, who killed the Pringles guy? Yeah, who killed the Pringles guy? But the Pringles guy has more hair, I thought. Oh, no, he does. It, actually, uh, his hair is kind of like Ernie from Sesame, Sesame Street. Street. Otherwise, who did his No, hair Ernie's hair is bushier than that. He looks so familiar. It's um, crazy. Qui Gon without the long hair. <laughs> no, you can't think of that. Oh, um. Our lawyer friend. A little maybe bit. a little bit bad. When he was younger. Yeah. The victim, Mr. Dead Man, was a staff member at the embassy. The defendant in this case, Mr. Mackerel. Holy mackerel, Batman. Whoa. <laughs> Look at that stink he face. He looks like. E. Whoa, he looks like a lost boy from Peter Pan went thug. <laughs> He was held for questioning the night of the incident as he was deemed suspicious. Or like, what was it, um, when Pain and Panic dress up as, like, children in oh, that yeah. one thing from Hercules? <laughs> <laughs> like yeah. that. He was quickly placed under, under arrested for possession of the murder weapon, a gun. Well, at least it's a gun and not blood force trauma to the head. Oh, he was struck on the head with the gun and died from blood <laughs> yeah, force trauma. Who, who needs the gunshot? <laughs> <laughs> Furthermore, at the time of the murder... The great thief Yada Garasu had successfully infiltrated the, Kodo the Kod Kodopian embassy as well. Yeah, I'm not going to be saying that well. At first, Rel claimed that he was himself was the Yada Garasu. Oh, he also looks like he's from Avatar. <laughs> but that he did not kill dead man. 
I wonder what he expected to gain from such a desperate lie. It's possible that he wants to go down while in the spotlight, if he is found guilty. There truly is no limit to people's inanity. Mm -hmm. But I digress. Continue, Edgeworth. Yes, sir. During the trial, the prosecution presented the security footage that captured the murder. The footage clearly showed Mr. Rell as the murderer. The act of Mr. Rell firing the gun could be clearly seen from the visitor's gallery. What? Upon seeing that, the defendant retracted his statement and admitted to the murder. Mm -hmm. I did it because I was told to, by the real Yadagarasu, Burn Faraday. Hmm, that sounds about right. However, you've forgotten one thing. While this may appear to simply be the murder of a Kadopian embassy staff member, people are actually referring to it as the second KG-8 incident. Oh, come on. The second KG-8 incident? I'm very sorry, sir. I fear I fa failed to study hard enough. Hmph. Well, even among the police, it's information that only a select few, like myself, are privy to. <laughs> Could you please enlighten me, sir? Please. Oh, also. Do tell. We are not gonna present that, are we? Oh. It is thanks to you that I have finally become a prosecutor, sir. I'm 18. It's amusing that you wanted to become a defense attorney, yet became my student. <laughs> it is a strange path you have traveled. It's true that I had once wanted to become a defense attorney, but now I am honored and proud to be a prosecutor. I see. Then as a student of mine, I suggest you remember this well. The prosecutor's badge is not to be flaunted. The dignity of a prosecutor lies in the man himself, not in the badge. I understand. I will keep that in mind. Throws away his badge. Von Karma is a butt and he's a terrible person, but he actually does have some then decent what, knowledge. What is that like, gem wisdom? then around his cravat? It's like Lamewa's brooch, but round. Yeah, but I thought it was like <laughs> a genuine blue prosecutor badge. No, oh. that's literally just fanciness. Oh, whatever. Besides, why put holes in your fine garments? It is simply preposterous. Prosecutors must also take pride in their appearance. I will keep this in mind as well. Oh, uh, you don't have to worry about that, Edgeworth. You're looking fine. I'm constantly having to remind the others at the prosecutor's office of this. One guy just plays basketball, okay? <laughs> it's terrible. And the other guy's never won a case. His name is Winston Payne. Payne, he sucks. <laughs> it's more fashionable to keep your prosecutor's badge in your pocket. In other words, always treat a prosecutor's badge with care and honor. I understand, sir. Oh my gosh. <laughs> this freaking game. Sir, what do you mean by the second KG-8 incident? In order for me to tell you that, you must first learn about the original case. What happened? Take a look at these documents. This is a three-year-old newspaper. KG-8 incident overview data Let's jotted down. Let's look at that. You have heard of the Amano Group scandal before, correct? Great! It's the Amano Group again! KG-8 incident overview. Canopian Embassy staff member Manny Cochin found not guilty. And then probably the that was the CCU. guy who got killed. A shadow over the Amano group? The victim... <laughs> so that's the guy who got off. That's the guy and who that's got off. And that's the person who died. Well, that's probably gonna... Oh, wait, Miss View. Miss CCU. I CCU. Oh. My, it's probably, like, Kay's mother or something. That would probably. Be bad. But she didn't she change... Kept, she kept she, her name. I was gonna say, she kept her name because um, she's an actress. <laughs> or, or she's um, like Chris's mom. Wife. Yeah, like Chris's mom. <laughs> wow. Sorry, we, we, should, we should stop referencing no, that. No, no, let's keep it up. Yes, I have. The secretary of Ernest Amato, the Amato Whoa. Group's director, was arrested. Whoa, he's like no younger. Under suspicion of smuggling. Ugh, his ears still sag. Correct, they do. <laughs> <laughs> CCU was an employee of the Amato Group. Oh, it's a Y, not a V. I can't see. Did can't you spot a CC view? I saw. I thought it was CC view. No, it's a U. Like C of you. And the sole witness to the smuggling operation. It was she who brought the crime to light. However, Miss Yu was silenced before she could testify in court. Wasn't a, a Kadopian embassy staff member arrested for the murder? Yes, a, K a Kadopian by the name of Manny Cochin was the suspect. However, due to the lack of evidence, the case went unresolved. Lack of evidence? Ha! If only I was in charge of the case! I would have just fate made some up! <laughs> I would have done everything in my power to prove his guilt. To make sure that all criminals are found guilty, my mentor really is dedicated. I wonder why he's letting Edgeworth take this case. To prove 
against himself. But as like, a good Von Karma. Here's the thing, though. This is Von Karma. Von Karma wouldn't do this unless he knew that we would fail or something. You know what or I mean? Or he wants to be like, look, I have the best apprentice out of everybody. Maybe, yeah, just a <laughs> flaunt. It could be just a flaunt. <laughs> I, I think some of it's just like, ugh, yep. Yeah. The, the yeah. Von Karmas are super interesting, which I really yeah. enjoy every time one of them appears. But it, it's really weird to me, like, the actions they take for right. each case <laughs> and how that can be their downfall or their rise up. Also, I know those are, like, those lines near his, like, mouth are, like, his, like, wrinkles. Uh -huh. They look like he got scratched by a cat, though. A little, a little bit. bit. I have the worst cat ever. <laughs> Faraday was the prosecutor on the case then, and he was as pathetic as ever. Mr. Faraday was in charge of the KG-8 incident as well. That's right. And now, once again, the victim of the case you are currently assigned to was someone who was scheduled to testify against that smuggling organization. And just like last time, the victim was murdered right before he was about to testify. Yep. You're catching on. The victim was murdered just before his day in court against the smuggling organization. Events are occurring almost exactly the same way as they did in the KG-8 incident. So that's why it is being called the second KG-8 incident? Yes. Yet there is one difference between the two incidents. What would that be? I'm here this time! <laughs> <laughs> the so-called noble thief that is sending everyone into an uproar. The great thief Yadagorasu. Yadagorasu? I'd better find out more. Oh, this is gonna kill my voice. Yeah, this is Von Karma. If it is, if it is true that the Yadagorasu showed up at the co the Kodopian embassy, why is that so hard to pronounce? Because it's Kodopian. like because you look at it and you're like, it's not gonna sound like that. Yeah. Also, it's kind of foreign, <clears throat> but nobody ever says Kodopian. Right. I think it's, it's, remember, it's the H. Remember Obi Wan Kenobi, and then you will get the it. Kenobi group. The Kenobian. Kodopian. Kenobian. Kodop. Kodopian. <laughs> <laughs> I can't do it! The H screws it up you if the H it, wasn't but there. But here's the thing, we're siblings, I'll screw it up too. Yeah. It's like, genetic. <laughs> yes, I'm sure. <laughs> what could he or she have been after? Hmm. No doubt to steal any suspicious accounting records and release them publicly. Or more likely to steal secrets from the Kodopian Embassy itself. Since the item that the Yadagorasu stole from there was sent to the police. They found it? What was it that the Yadagorasu sent to the police? I don't know the details. Anything related to the Yadagorasu is getting the top secret treatment. What? Still, I find it very ironic. By returning the stolen item to the police, it was proof positive that the Yadagorasu had infiltrated the embassy on the same day the staff member was killed. Criminals have a way of incriminating themselves, wouldn't you say? Yes, that, would that have could have been. That could have been on purpose. That would have to be the first time the Yadagorasu left evidence behind, correct? Yes, indeed. If you wish to learn more about the Yadagorasu, then I suggest you ask Faraday. Mr. Faraday? He happens to be the prosecutor in charge of the Yadagorasu case as well. He's the prosecutor in charge of both the KG-8 incident and the Yadagorasu case? No, oh, we're taking it over for him. Mr. Faraday really has a lot on his plate. Oh my gosh, it's a child with a balloon. What is it, little girl? You're scary, mister. Did you need something? Um, I wanted to trade these coins with you. A fistful of dimes, quarters, and pennies. But it looks like you've got exactly a dollar. Is this what you wanted? Hey, look, it's actually an American dollar. Yeah, proof, they fixed it. Proof that it takes place in America. There you go. <laughs> what I needed. Little K. She's not that little. She's probably like 12. <laughs> this is seven years in the past. And, and, she's, and she's 16. Do the she's math. She's nine. Okay, that, yeah, sure. <laughs> okay. Could that child be here to watch the trial? How disrespectful for a child <laughs> like that wow! to be running around inside the courthouse. He's like, my little Von <laughs> Karma would never do that. Does no one have respect for this country's judicial system anymore? Uh, oh, I thought someone got shot. I was like, no, what's happening? The paperwork for the prosecutor's substitution is complete. <laughs> Why are you? Do you even know how much time there is left before the trial resumes? Uh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> I could have you mopping up this courthouse instead of protecting it in an instant. Wow. <laughs> it's no bother, sir. 
Not being completely prepared could prove to be a perfect handicap for me. Hmm. A proud one you are. You had better collect the evidence from Farnay. Wait, are they like yourself. doing a weird hand touch? <laughs> he's pointing and he's pointing. They're oh, pointing at Oh, they're pointing. It just looks like their hands, <laughs> like, um, what is it? like in the Kingdom Hearts <laughs> opening cutscene where Riku's like, huh, and yeah, still tries yeah. to grab his and hand. Then the and then the wave crashes over. Yeah. Them. <laughs> <It looks> like... <laughs> can I just excuse myself? I really need a glass of water. I can do that too. We can end it here if you need. So, like, three glasses of water later, <laughs> I think I'm ready to. <laughs> <laughs> Even then, I, my voice is still weird because Von Karma destroys my voice. It's like grovelly. Uh, yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Let's try this now. It's time for your debut, Edgeworth. We're just gonna say that he has a cold and that makes him sound mm. higher. <laughs> no, the problem is it ruins my, the other voices. I can still do Von Karma's voice. It's just like every other voice sounds weirder now. Who's the weirdo? September 10th, oh, that's 4 p.m. District Court, courtroom number three. No, that's on Karma. Oh, the defense attorney's not here. Oh, boy. Just what is going on? Why is it far to hear yet? How is it possible that the defense is not prepared yet? I Bailiff, where is Mr. Faraday? Oh, I'm not sure. I wasn't really paying attention. <laughs> <laughs> it was the judge. Whoa, he's tall. I don't know why I pictured like a short-ish man. Mm -hmm. Oh, you must be the one Mr. Von Karma recommended. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> oh, that's so cool. <laughs> we finally see him. <laughs> I hear this will be your first trial. I look forward to seeing how you perform. Oh, by the way, was there someone celebrating a birthday during the recess? I could have sworn that I heard a, par a popper going off. Come to think of it, the other day with my grandson. Sir, it looks like the trial is about to resume, however... Yes, it will be all but impossible to prove the witness a liar without the evidence from Faraday. Where is that blasted buffoon and what is he up to? Clearly- ah, It's a better emergency, sir! Oh, that's not the bailiff. <laughs> <laughs> And then he says that and then he gets knocked over. It's a silence! There shall be no yelling in this sacred <laughs> hall of law! Oh, wait. <laughs> Bailiff, remove that man from this courtroom at once. It's Gumshoe! Please! Wait! You have to listen to me! There's an emergency! Defendant Lobby Number Two, and Mr. Faraday, the defendant! They're the, dead? the two of them! They're. They're both dead, Your Honor! Whoa! 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 What? Well, that's gonna be fun for us. Our thing was in the bag until- <laughs> I knew it! She was going to get something from the vending machine! September 10th, District like, Court Hallway. I really want some ice cream. There's that chick. There's the weirdo. Stay back. Ugh. He's so short. No one's allowed on the crime scene. Period. Why is, like, everything <laughs> about him gray? Just who does this oddball think he is? Oh, crap. I didn't think she was coming back soon. This is becoming quite the, the hot spot. Isn't she Mr. Rell's defense attorney? She looks like she's super stuck up. <laughs> hey, you! No running in the hallway, pal! And who are you to tell me what to do? I'll never find out what's going on like this. It's time for some civil discourse. Edgeworth starts- I need a snack. Edgeworth goes into the beat him up, shoot him up mode. Like in Scott Pilgrim. <laughs> Go left. Do, yeah. do, do. Hmm, a drink vending machine. Ack! Now is not the time to be pondering what kind of drink I want. Yes, it is. Interesting. They're selling a special courtroom-themed food products here. What? Many of them seem sort of troublesome and suspicious. Objection, I suppose. Courtroom special. Hey! Gumshoe. And you are... Who, me? Hey, pal. It's common courtesy to tell someone your name first before asking theirs. Ugh. Point taken. My name is Miles Edgeworth. I'm a district prosecutor. A prosecutor? I've never seen a prosecutor as young as you, pal. I've told you my name. Now would you mind telling me yours? Detective Dick Gumshoe! And just recently I achieved my dream of becoming a detective. More than a dream. It's like I was born to do this. Wait, maybe I should check and make sure that I'm not really in some crazy dream first. This detective is entirely too excited to be at a murder scene. 
Yeah. Also, he's really thin there. So, Detective Gumshoe, would do you would you mind telling me what you know about the incident? You know that I don't have to tell you anything, right? I know that. But it would behoove you to fill me in on what you know. Wow, you're a proud one for such a youngster, aren't you? Well, anyway, Detective Bad is the one in charge. So oh you're, you're just gonna have to ask him for all the details, okay? Oh, Detective Bad. As for me, <laughs> I was guarding the door to Defendant Lobby Number Two. So exactly. Hmm. So you were the guard detail. Did you notice anything strange while you were on duty? Well, I freaked out when I heard a gunshot, and then I kind of froze. You're a detective, and a one measly gunshot scared you that much? Then again, I can hardly claim to not know what it's like to hear one at close range. Then Detective Bad came running to the scene. We went into lobby number two together, and both men were lying there, dead. Maybe they shot each other. Is that everything? Hmm. Yeah, that's it. I was in the hallway the whole time, but I didn't hear a single peep of the struggle. Interesting. Other than the gunshot, he didn't hear a single sound of commotion. So both of them are dead. Where's the chick? That's the real question. Where's Kay? Indeed. You mentioned that you've only recently become a detective, did you not? You got it! I'm a brand spanking new detective! Hmm, so that means you've probably never seen a real prosecutor's badge, have you? If you so desire to see one, I just might be able to make your day. You don't have to go through the trouble, pal, because a real man has a police badge. And someday, I'm gonna become an ace detective, just like Detective Bad. Um, did I say something wrong, pal? Forget it, detective. <laughs> oh, I got your wanted to show off. I was in the hall on guard duty, ever than the gunshot didn't hear a sign of the struggle. Alright, that's fine. None at all. Okay, whatever. Do you have a minute? You know, I'm not really into talking to people I don't know. Especially at a time like this. Ah, uh, I apologize for not introducing myself before bothering you. My name is Miles Edgeworth. I was to take Mr. Faraday's place she in court. She's a stick. She's so <laughs> skinny. My gosh. <laughs> She's got the hourglass frame, apparently. Apparently. Edgeworth, huh? Never heard of you. So Faraday substitutes a newbie, huh? I'll have you know, madam, that I studied under Manfred von Karma. Do not take me for some naive novice. <laughs> Do not take me for some naive novice. <laughs> Right there! These are the garments of one who gallantly presents the facts! <laughs> oh, thanks for the great laugh, but try not to make me laugh so much, okay? I wasn't trying to do anything of the sort! <laughs> I'm just kidding! I was just goofing around! By the way, do you know who I am? My name is Calesto Yu. And if you're telling the truth, then we were about to go head to head in court. She's so weird. But she's also, a great she's character. the daughter. She must be the daughter of the gal who got killed. So there's that. Same last name. Well, aunt, daughter, uh, or mother, how, or someone. How old is? Oh, we don't have her profile yet. Oh. What? We well. Also, she's got some jazzy music as her theme song. Yeah. Ah, oh, but of course, I have heard much about you, Miss Yu. <laughs> but of course, I have heard so much about you. You're a regular Shakespeare. Did I say something funny? Okay, now She's we... so weird. She's and amazing. Very, very She's strange. like me. Oh, there we go. We do have her. Okay. So, no. Bur Burn Farday, he's 40. Whatever. Okay. Nobody cares. Dead Man is 53. He's dead. Mackerel is 32. Did he die? Uh, no, he's alive. They, they said he did. Oh, okay. He's one uh, of the guys. Yadagarasu. Somebody. It's K. We know it's K. The judge. The judge. Is <laughs> That's his name. Ageless. He's Zeus. Um, uh, we Dick, got Dick Gumshoe is 26. Callisto used only 20. She's a year younger than me. That's ridiculous. Mm. Amazing. What about those earrings, though? She's got like the j scales of justice as her earrings. Oh, I thought those were um bands in her hair. I didn't even realize. Oh, no, that. those are earrings. <laughs> I'd like to update. You. I'd like you to update me on the okay. situation. Okay. I. I will be sorely disappointed if her, like, 
animation of defeat isn't like her head tilting and having the weights shift. <laughs> I will be so mad if that's not involved. Her damage animation? Yeah, her damage animation. I don't really know anything. Why don't you try talking to the detectives over there? If that's the case, then why are you here? <laughs> <laughs> oh, what's so funny? It's just the way you speak is so tactless. The person I was going against in court until only a little while ago was just murdered. It's not like I could go back into the courtroom pretending as though nothing happened. That's a good point. I apologize for asking such an insensitive question. It's fine. Don't worry about it. Excuse me, but who are you? What's up? Detective Tyrell Ben. I love how his jacket has like bullet holes in it. <laughs> this like, guy's one of my favorite characters. Like he in the ran game. from the scene, or, like sustained yeah. five bullet wounds. I was informed of the situation and came as quickly as possible. So, how did you arrive and inspect the body before me? Faraday requested for me to go testify in the trial. Plain and simple. Mr. Faraday requested that you be here. That's a weird. I've already contacted HQ about the situation. I've got nothing to say to you, kid. Kid! I'm Mr. Faraday's substitute in today's trial. Therefore, I insist that you update me on the situation. I can't back down here. I have a right to know. Do I need to teach you a thing or two about how to talk to adults, kid? Yeah. Is he threatening me? You do need to learn how to talk, though. Is, is he going for his gun? What? It, it's just a mirror. How dare he trick me like that? Faraday was stabbed to death with some kind of blade. And he had a gun in his hand. It's like Batman Gaston. The other man, a Mr. Mac Rill, who shot and killed. I don't care. <laughs> he, was, he was a piece of crap. He was. He was found holding a bloody knife in his hand. Was there anyone else who went into defendant lobby number two? Yeah, that big lug over there. His name's Gumshoe. Uh-huh. He was in charge of guarding the place. He's claiming that no one else entered the room. If that's the case, then... They must have killed each other, correct? Maybe. Such impudence. This guy is really testing my patience. Here's the thing that I'm trying to figure out. <laughs> Maybe both of these people are guilty. Maybe he's actually the Adagarasu and they're like, he's like, oh dang. Found me, crap. Gotta kill and him. And then the other dude, maybe <laughs> like also Angelina Ballerina killed. did to Miss Louis' uh, fiance. <laughs> oh my gosh. I uh, I need to watch that show again and find some more weird parts. <laughs> that's like one of the weirdest things I've ever seen. Oh no, my pally teacher's gonna marry a guy, and I don't like that. Him. I know. I'll, I'll kill, kill him. <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't actually happen, but kind. Kind she of. pretends to drown so that he'll actually drown because she knows he can't swim. <laughs> Jelena went from being just like a bratty mouse a bratty to bratty like mouse evil. to being like, holy crap, she's gonna murder him. Oh my gosh. Why was I not informed that you were going to testify in court? Homicides aren't my only gig. The Yadagorasu case is also one of my assignments. Okay. Hmm. So you were called upon the, to comment on the Yadagorasu's characteristics? in order to assess if Mr. Faraday really was the Yadagorasu or not. Well, well. Looks like you just might have a brain after all and say that head of your son. SON! I'm not your son, Pops! That's funny. Well, is the trial gonna reconvene? I miss you! Uh, there's someone here who wishes to see you! Who is it? Uh, Kodopian Embassy staff member by the name of Manny Coach and... What? <laughs> What's going on? He's got an identical twin with the exact same name, but one has one N in Manny and one has two N's in Manny. <laughs> Detective Bad and Missy Yu's moods just changed all of a sudden. Wait a second. Was it Manny Cochin? I'll be right there. Her strut. Her stride! It's nice to see you again, Missy. Why are you here? I have no desire to ever see you again. No, no. Actually, would you mind stepping inside for a brief chat? Fine. Let's go. Everyone dies. <laughs> what is Von Karma doing? Whoa! He, like, sped up. <laughs> Bad. 
Bon Karma. It's been a long time. I knew you would show up. You usually do when the Yadagorasu is involved, and I see this case is no exception. Do you know Detective Bad, sir? Yes. He's like an old bloodhound that never leaves the scene of a crime. If only he would get a promotion and move on. It's the crime scene where a detective is most useful and effective. <laughs> it's not like I don't know that. Moving on, though, Bad, the man that I just passed by. Was he not the suspect from the KG-8 incident? So I was right. Just what is that man doing wandering around here? That Faraday. I can't believe he let such an easy catch get away. Imbecile. I would've proved his guilt in three minutes and made it in time for the spa. Yep. <laughs> Vakarma, I think you've said enough of that. It's in poor taste to speak like that about the departed. Hmm. Very well. Back on topic, I'm placing Edgeworth in charge of the investigation here. Objection! Oh yeah, boy! <laughs> Bet you didn't expect both on Karma's in this case. Why does she have such long hair? Why does she- Okay, her eyes went from, oh, anime-like, to, like, getting small and rigid. <laughs> what is she, 13? She is 13 in this case, actually. <laughs> <laughs> she looks. Like, she also looks like a Fire Emblem character. Yep. What is up with this? Uh, Papa, how can you place him in charge? Francisca, what are you doing here? I'm here for summer vacation. What else? Francisca von Karma. So she's here on vacation from Germany. She's got like the the summer outfit without the sleeves. Yep. <laughs> She's the daughter of Manfred von Karma and a student of his who's also junior to me. You're the one who's junior to me! And don't you forget it! You're not conveniently avoiding the bar examination, are you? Ha! <laughs> if you were able to pass, then I'll absolutely have no trouble at all. I'll never allow myself to lose to you. Never! Why does she always have to be this competitive? Anyway, Papa... Are you really assigning Miles Edgeworth to cover the case? Yes, I am. Why do you ask? How old must his wife be if he's like 16, she's 13? So he had her when he was 47. Guys can do that. Y yeah, it's just not normal. Okay, no, okay, guys, the, the span of time that guys can have kids yeah. is pretty wide. It's pretty wide. For women, it's a it's lot a narrower. It's a lot narrower, yeah. Well, you know, I'm close to becoming a prosecutor myself. And I'm 100% confident that I can do a better job than him. I love how she has the shorter whip. <laughs> she does. It looks like she just has a stick in her hand. Yeah. <laughs> That's just like Francisca. She has no problem badmouthing someone right in front of them. Bad. She has a skirt on that's like, she looks like a healer from Fire Emblem. This is ridiculous. That's not a skirt, that's a coat. Oh, it's a coat? Yeah, Wait, she's, so she's her, wearing pants so her like Elsa. sleeveless coat comes down. Oh! Now yeah. I see it. Oh! Yeah. Then she looks like- yeah. No, okay. Yeah. These two will be conducting the investigation. Wow! What? You want me to let both of these kids loose on the crime scene? Yes. This will be the best thing ever. Ha! This is a perfect opportunity for them to work on their prosecutorial skills. The crime scene is not a place for children to be messing around in. Well, guess what? I'm the one with the authority over this crime scene, bad. And I will not tolerate complaining. Poor bad. Edgeworth, Francisco, I leave this case to the two of you. Understood, sir. Yes, Papa. I'll go take care of the paperwork now. Still got her curtsy. Going. Remember, I'll accept nothing but a perfect report from the both of you. Do not disappoint me. Hold up, Von Karma. I still haven't agreed to this. Miles Edgeworth. It's been quite some time, Francisca. This will be the perfect chance for us to see which of us is truly worthy of the Von Karman name. Well, seeing as how my last name is still Edgeworth, <laughs> would it kill you to at least say hello? Ugh. Um, long time no see. Very good. Just because you became a prosecutor first doesn't mean you can act all proud. She hasn't changed a bit. Edgeworth. As 
I was saying. We shall see which of one of us is worthy of the Von Karman name. For crying out loud, I've been reduced to a babysitter. What about Gumshoe? He's just sat there, said nothing for forever. Looks like Mr. Von Karma was successful in convincing the detective. That's just like him. He never fails. Now I'd appreciate it if you could quickly run me through the facts, Detective Bad. You're better off checking things out on your own. Very well. It seems like getting help from Detective Bad will be a most arduous task. We don't need him. We got each other. It's just September 10th, 4.15pm? Was that living on a prayer you were saying? Yeah. Ugh. <laughs> <laughs> uh. It's the only real explanation that they killed each other simultaneously. With a gunshot and a knife. Miles Edgeworth! You should listen to someone until they are finished talking! Um, what are you talking about? I only say this one more time. This is a competition to see who is truly worthy of the Von Karman name. A competition? And the person that figures out the truth first wins. Hmm. So the person who doesn't discover the truth is a dishonor to the name? Exactly! I don't care that you became a prosecutor before me. I simply refuse to hear any more foolish things come from your foolishly foolish mouth! Hmm. Fine, whatever makes you happy. Can I take that as you accepting my challenge? Once again, whatever makes you happy. Huh. Well then, let's begin our investigation, shall we? I'm going to find the perfect evidence and prettily present it like the professional I am. Competing to discover the truth behind a crime. How delightfully childish. I do love this, though. <laughs> you kids over there, hold it! Kid! Ha! Serves you right, Miles. He just called you a kid. I said kids. kids. How dare you call me a kid as well! I'll do what I please, and I won't allow you to cause a ruckus on my crime scene. Hey, big guy, you're going to watch over these two. Yes, sir! Detective Bat, sir! No, do what I say from now on, kids, okay? You'd better not get in our way, Scruffy. You feel the bite of my whip if you do! Yeek! The, the new prosecutor boy! Let's get your investigation started already, alright? This is amazing that Von Karma at 13 <laughs> is still, like, controlling Gumshoe even though he's, like, 26. Yeah. This is great. Great. Now even that detective is treating me like a child. Alright! It's time to get investigating! Get a move on, prosecutor boy! My name is Miles Edgeworth. And if you were to call me prosecutor boy one more time... It will be my duty as a prosecutor to look into your monthly salary. Oh no! What? <laughs> and what would you do with my salary after you saw how much it was? That's up to you now, isn't it? Really? Sounds good, pal! He's so naive. Alright, oh begin investigation. This is exactly- oh my gosh, this is amazing. <laughs> Detective Bad, may I have a word with you? What is it? It appears that both a knife and a gun were used as murder weapons. I guess the trial is postponed. <laughs> yeah, it does. <laughs> it is. <laughs> <laughs> that leads us to our first question of the investigation. Where did the men acquire the weapons? He acquired something. <laughs> the gun was inside of Faraday's bag. It was a piece of evidence that was presented in the trial earlier today. It was loaded? It was used to kill a Kodopian embassy staff member. Why would you keep that loaded? But... I never heard anything about the knife. Uh, Mr. Rell was being held by the wait, police. Actually, There's no way he could have brought it in. That's a good question that I just realized. If you have a murder weapon to present in court, say it's like a gun, mm -hmm. would you keep it loaded exactly how it was Probably. when it was doing it? I guess that would make sense. But still, that would be, like, wouldn't it be Jeez, you show- dangerous. Wouldn't it be you show up and be like, here's the evidence that I will be presenting later? Because you can't just, like, bring a gun through. They've got metal detectors. Yeah. They're like, bailiffs, they're like, Aah. It's probably- it has to be put in, like, bags and stuff. Sure, but, like, why would they let you have that on you? I don't know. Like, I feel like, similar to how airport security works, it, when you go in and you're like, hey, I want to check my bag, maybe it has a gun in it or something, then they take it from you. You never see it again until you need it. Which would be whenever yeah. you land to your destination. So maybe. I, I don't know I don't how know. this would work. I'm we curious if there's any lawyers or people that like 
that kind of thing that are up. Yeah. And they know more than us. Let us know. Which means it's possible that Farday had the knife on him from the start as well. Could it have been a piece of evidence that had yet to be presented? But then why doesn't Detective Bad know about it? Wait, what if? It's possible that Mr. Faraday brought the knife in under the guise of prosecutorial evidence. He could have then brought it out and attacked Mr. Rell with it. Huh. Maybe you've got a brain in there after all, kid. Nah. Is he going to treat me like a child forever? Yep. Looks like Mr. Faraday attacked Mr. Rell first, who then counterattacked. Is it just me or does he have more hair at 18? Like in the back? Maybe. That's the only logical conclusion you can draw from a scene like this. Hmm. Not yet. I feel that it's too much, much too early to be drawn conclusions already. I must first find conclusive evidence so as to ensure the honor of the Von Karma name. Which we'll do next time. Yeah! Thanks for watching, everybody! This is, Now you can kind of see why I really like this case. Yeah, it's got all, of, all these cool characters in it. That's Both nice. old and new. Anyhow, look forward to that next time. Until we meet again, have a great day, and God bless.